Welcome back to our series on recording drums. In our final installment, I'm going to be using a full setup of 10 microphones. This is the setup I use most of the time in the studio, depending on the needs of the project. Let's dive right in and take a look at the gear I'll be using, my microphone choices, and mic placements. With a total of 10 mics on the kit, we need a lot of inputs. For this video, I'm using a PreSonus Fire Studio project, which provides 8 mic inputs chained via Firewire to a Fire Studio Mobile, giving us 2 additional mic pre's and 6 more line level inputs. I'm also using the PreSonus ADL700 tube channel strip connected to a line input on the Fire Studio Mobile, which I'll be using for the room microphone. The interfaces are connected to a MacBook Pro, which is running the new Logic Pro X. Everything is being recorded at 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Now let's take a look at the mics I'll be using. I'm using two mics on the kick drum for this setup, one on the inside port and one on the outside. Our inside mic is the Sennheiser E902 pointed directly at the beater on the other side of the drum. Adjust the depth of the mic inside the drum to get more or less attack. Here's what this mic sounds like by itself. On the outside of the kick, I'm using the Shure KSM-313 ribbon microphone. A mic on the outside of the kick can help fill in some mid-range punch that the inside mic can sometimes be lacking. It sounds like this. On the snare, I'm using two mics as well, one on the top and one on the bottom. On the top, the good old Shure SM57 is always a great choice. Careful placement of this mic is crucial, as it's one of the more dominant sounds of the drum kit. I like to give this mic some breathing room, about 2-3 to three inches from the head, pointed towards the center for lots of body and tone. Also, pay attention to its position in relation to the hi-hat. Use the SM57's cardioid pickup pattern to your advantage to get the most rejection of the hi-hat possible. Too much hi-hat bleed in the snare mic can cause problems later. Underneath the snare, I'm also using a Shure SM57. I've got the mic pointed right at the snares underneath, probably 3 inches from the head. Anytime you use two mics pointed towards each other on the same source, you may need to invert the phase of one of them. The Fire Studio interfaces don't have this option on the hardware itself, so I'll flip it later in Logic after it's recorded. It's a good idea to assume this needs to be done, but flip the phase back and forth and choose the one that sounds the best or fullest when both mics are active. Here's this mic by itself. On Tom Duty is the Sennheiser MD421 dynamic mic. These are fantastic tom and percussion microphones and are studio standards for this application. Again, I'm leaving 2-3 to three inches between the mic and head. Point the mic towards the center for more tone or towards the rim for more attack. I've also got this mic positioned where the symbol above is directly behind the mic to reject as much of the symbol as possible. On the floor tom, I'm also using a Sennheiser MD421. They just sound good on this application. Same positioning technique here as with the other tom. Overheads can be a little tricky to get right at first. I've got two AKG 414Bs spaced out in a stereo pair over the kit. The important thing here is their phase relationship with the other microphones. If they're out of phase with one of the close mics, it can sound thin and weak. Now, 99% of the time the snare and kick drum are panned in the center of the mix, so I like to imagine a straight line along the kick and snare, essentially dividing the kit into two sides. Position the overheads at equal distances from either side using the center of the snare head as the measuring point. 
Carefully measure the distance from each overhead and make sure they are exactly the same distance away. Here's what the overhead mics sound like by themselves. A small diaphragm condenser mic like the Earthworks SR30 is a good choice for the hi-hat. Position it a couple of inches above the top hat pointed straight down. Adjust the position within the radius of the hat to your liking. In general, the closer you get to the inside of the hats, the darker the tone will be. For the room mic, I'm using a Royer R121 ribbon microphone. Ribbon mics are great for room mics because they have a natural ability to roll off some of the high-end cymbal wash. I'm running this mic through the ADL 700 channel strip with the high-pass filter set at around 80 Hz, cutting about 5 to 6 dB at 330 Hz with the EQ, and applying some heavy compression with a fast attack and release for a huge squash sound. Here's what it sounds like. And now let's hear the kit after it's been fully mixed. <laughs> 